Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, a fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And by Summonex, the new effective non-habit-forming aid to sleep. Taken as directed, Summonex helps bring 100% safe sleep. Here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> You thought your TV screen was cracked, didn't you? Well, it isn't. It's only me. And tonight I've got to, up to $10,000 for each of our couples. And if anybody says the secret word, the duck, who's been with me for nigh on to 80 years, will fall down and pay him an extra 100 bucks. What have we next, uh, George? Uh, Groucho, I have Emma Gatewood standing by to talk to you. And her uh, partner is a special guest, one of the most successful authors of our time, Mr. Max Schulman. So, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Yeah, I'm delighted to meet you and Max. Of course, I've known you for some time, so I'm not going to pretend that I don't know who you are. I just wish I had your talent, that's all. Now, if you say the secret word, you don't understand the game, ma'am. Yes. You'll each win an additional fifty dollars. <laughs> now, where are you from, Emma? Gallipolis, Ohio. Gallipolis, Ohio. Yes. Wasn't there a famous writer came from there? McIntyre. McIntyre. Oh, McIntyre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See how what, what a, a memory I have for trivia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very good columnist in his day. Yes. Were you born? He always talked about, what is it, Gallipolis? Gallipolis. Gallipolis. But he, I noticed he lived in New York. <laughs> he was always talking about Gallipolis. Uh, were you born on a farm? Uh, yes, I was. Emma? Why was this? I mean, did your folks, uh, what did they raise on the farm in addition to you? Tobacco and corn and wheat and a little cane. A little cane? <laughs> <laughs> How big a family did he raise, Emma? Fifteen. Fifteen children? Well, he must have raised quite some cane. Do right? <laughs> you think fifteen children in one family is a good idea? Would you no. recommend it to other parents? Too many. They can't take proper care of them. Uh, do you have uh, children? Uh? I have eleven. <laughs> in other words, you don't subscribe to your own philosophy, do you? Huh? Well, let Max, uh, I know you're here tonight to discuss your recent literary triumph. I was a teenage dwarf. I've read it, and you know I think it's a funny book. Thank you. I know a great deal about funny books because I wrote a hilarious book myself, you know. It is. It is indeed. Now, I wish you'd explain to Emma just why you picked such a conservative title for your book. Uh, I... Why did you call it Teenage Dwarf? This is a story about a boy who, when he was in junior high school, was, was too short for girls. He was, you know... You mean financially? Uh, oh, no, no. I mean physically. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, five feet three or four, which according to old medical tables is, is the right size for boys of 13 right. and 14. But you don't know what's happened to girls, little girls these days. They've, uh, I don't they, even know what's happening to big girls these days. <laughs> Girls have become giants. Huh? Enormous. Yes. Just enormous. It's true. Yeah. There's one thing in your book I found extremely interesting, Max, and you say that our society has developed a matriarchy. Oh, uh, clearly. Could you explain this? Uh, oh, certainly. In detail the, uh, for uh, Emma here? I'd be happy to. This is a country run by women. Yes. Without question. Just, uh, when you you're getting no argument out of me. No, no. When you and I were boys, when Dad came home at night, no matter how hard he had been working during the day, he could depend on it that Mama was even more tired than he because she had been baking bread and scrubbing clothes by hand and making soap and cooking Dating dinner, children. everything. But today, with, with the automatic washers and dryers and store bread and TV dinners and power steering, he comes home at night. He's bushed. He's just dragging himself into the house, and she looks as though she spent a month in the country. Yeah. <laughs> now, she says to him, dear, she's full of plans. She says, don't you think we ought to uh, flood the, the, the study and make an aquarium out of it? Or don't you think we ought to put another set of braces on Peter's teeth? You know, things like that. Now, this poor, tired man lying there says, 
You decide, honey. Well, you give a woman power like that, and she's bound to achieve the size to go with it, you know. If this is, there's no doubt about this. The women are in the driver's seat. But, but I, I must say, though, uh, I don't think women like it that way. I don't, I don't think so either. I think they're very insecure. They would prefer the men to run the, the, uh, the home and the country. But the men have relinquished. They've That's capitulated. Right. The women have gotten it by default. That's right. So nobody's happy. The women don't want it, the men don't want it, and the kids don't know who their fathers are. <laughs> Now, Emma, what about you? You've been listening to this kind of a uh, sophomore conversation here. Do you think uh, it's a good idea for the wife to run the family? No. You don't, eh? Well, Emma, now that your children are grown, what do you do for excitement? Oh, I hike. You hike? Yes. You mean you just keep walking all the time? What kind of walking do you do? I walk the Oregon Trail. The Oregon this, Trail? This year. Oh, you walked it? Yes. You I mean like Lewis and Clark? Yes. When was this? This year. You walked the Oregon Trail this yes. year? Well, mm -hmm. how, uh, how did you arrive at that kind of a pastime? Oh, I uh, didn't Were have you... anything else to do. The family's all married and gone, and I just wanted to do something. How old are you? Uh, you 72. 72. Huh? And how long was this trip that you... Uh... 2,000 miles. You walked 2,000 miles? What were you walking for? Well, I like to walk, and I just uh, but isn't it dull like to spend the summer that way. Don't you? Isn't it dull if you don't have some objective of some kind? Suppose well, I when you got to the other end, what happened? You turn around and walk back again? No. Uh, well, the, uh, this year I walked up to Centennial, up to Portland. Uh, and from where? Independence, Missouri. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you ever run into an old guy there with glasses that used to... Uh, <laughs> I think he was a television actor. He was on a Benny show, Jack. <laughs> it's time we got on with the game. Max, it's been fun talking to you, and good luck with your book. I know it's a big seller. Do you understand the game? I don't have to explain it, huh? Uh, you selected spelling as your category, right? Yes, we did. So, shall we start? For $200, spell the word uh, SADA. S O L. before a grand jury. No, 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 no. You still, you still, still testified? You that still didn't give us the DER. That's, that's quite true. Yes. Uh, so the fix was only half there. Look, Max, when, we're, when we're both under oath together, yes. will you testify in my favor? If you will in mine. Yes. I will. Okay. Well, you got the answer. You know the answer. Huh? S-O-L-D-E-R. How did you ever get that? Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, I have $200. Well, I'm, I'm Sodder and Wiser. And you're going to take a $300 question. Yeah. Spell the word Sigma, meaning a young swan. Uh, C-Y-G-N-E-T. Oh. E-O-R-M. You can take that home for the Oregon Trail. And you've already got yourself $500, but you have uh, two more questions, and so this is all gravy now. Let's go for the bundle. Right, you show me one piece of gravy. Just <laughs> <laughs> a figure of speech. Take another $300 one, huh? Spell the word poignancy, meaning the quality of being bitter, sharp, stimulating. Wouldn't it be great if he missed P? P? So yeah. far, okay? Yeah. P O I G N A N C Y. P U R Emma, take it with you. You now have $800 and one more chance. Take another $300. I knew this guy was going to ruin us. <laughs> <laughs> this will make it a total of $1,100, and you're assured of coming back and trying for 10 anyway. Spell the word uh, obeisance, meaning homage, reverence. O B E I S A N C E. Aren't you ashamed to take the money? <laughs> <laughs> Emma gets well, well, you uh, wind up with eleven $1 hundred dollars, and that means that we'll see you a little later in the program when you try for two, five, or ten thousand dollars. Well, see you later, Em. <laughs> see you later, Max. I'm going out in the Oregon. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, I have Mr. R.L. Armstrong waiting to talk to you, uh, Groucho, and his partner is a special guest, Miss uh, Terry Huntington. And That's I think... in Indiana, isn't it, Terry Huntington? Uh, uh, wait till she comes out here and you can decide that for yourself. Okay. She was... Um... I mean, have you withdrawn from the show? No, no, but I just wanted to get over... You're going to be happy. <laughs> You're going to like this whole thing, if you'll just let me get to it here. Uh, she was chosen Miss... I wish you wouldn't assume my reaction before the people come out. Uh, this is Miss uh, Terry Huntington, who was chosen Miss USA this year. Oh. And now, you see, would you come out, please, and meet Yes, yes, Mark. hurry, hurry. <laughs> wow, hey. Eagly, beagly. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. Miss US, USA, as well. I'm charmed, charmed, really charmed to meet you. Was uh, this in the Miss Universe contest, Terry? You don't mind if I call you Terry, yeah? No, not at all. Uh, are you from Terry Hood? Excuse me? No, forget it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere with that question, anyhow. Was this in the Miss Universe contest that you won this... Uh, Award? Uh, yes, it was. Kudo, whatever it was. Uh, how did you finish in the in the finals? I was second runner-up in the finals. Runner-up? Yes. Well, that's pretty good. Out of how many contestants was that? There were about 48 of us in the Miss USA, and then of and course. that was the finals. 36 40? of us from all the countries. Uh, well, I would say that's quite an achievement. Thank and you. And you certainly uh, deserve that, I think. It's no disgrace, you know, to come in third in the Miss Universe contest. I've been out with females who came in last. <laughs> I mean, at Santa Anita. <laughs> now, where do you live, Terry? Uh, right now, I'm living in here in Hollywood, but I am originally from Northern California. Oh, did you come to California to be in the contest and then decide mm -hmm. to remain here permanently? No, I've been in California all my life. Oh, you have. Well, that isn't very long, is it? Yes. Is it? Why did your parents come to California? Was it uh, so that you could be born here? Well, no, my parents were born here also. Oh. Now, why did their parents come here? <laughs> so your parents could be born here? No, their, their parents were born here also. They're... You mean you... Well, I'm not going to give up that easy. <laughs> my... Are you sure you weren't born in Terry Hutt? No, I wasn't. Oh. I... Well, what generation uh, native daughter are you? I am fifth. Generation. Fifth, huh? mm -hmm. You're a fifth generation, huh? You must be loaded with smog, aren't you? If you... <laughs> no, I come from Northern California. Oh, and they don't have any smog up no. there? No. Your name is uh, R.L. Armstrong, is That's that right? That's right, sir. Yes, sir. What does the R.L. stand for? What is your first <clears throat> name? I don't have a first name. It's initial name only, Mr. Marks. Why did they decide on who ever decided on R.L.? Why not B.B.D.? Or... <laughs> they wanted to be fancy, they could have uh, made it uh, RSVP. Why are, you, why are you called RL? Well, it's just a lot of people in Texas have initial names. Are you from Texas? Yes, sir. It's not unusual down there. Of course, it's unusual everywhere else in the world. It's caused me lots of times to explain lots of things. Uh -huh. Well, I guess there are lots of initials in Texas, aren't there? But most of them are burned in the rear end of a cow. <laughs> Now, you are from Texas, though. Huh? In that case, I don't have to call you R.L. I'll, I'll just call you Tex. I figured you would sooner or later. Everybody else does. Yeah. Well, do you, uh, don't you like that name? Well, not particularly. Uh, well, what objection do you have to Tex? Well, in the first place, uh, when anybody calls you Tex, immediately they expect you to just fall over bow legged and start hollering, howdy, y'all. <laughs> I don't understand. What do you mean by falling over bow-legged? Uh, is everybody in Texas bow-legged? Well, no, but when they say hello, Tex, you know, well, immediately they expect you, you know, to come on like gangbusters. Howdy. Oh. <laughs> is that all about Texas that displeases you, Tex, or do you have some other gripes about the uh, Lone Star State? Well... Is that what you call it? I don't call it anything. I just uh, forget about it if I can. Oh. <laughs> In other words, you're a professional Texas hater, is that it? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I'd, I'd just say that uh, Texas should be proud that Alaska's uh, one of the states now. It's not the only big place with nothing in it. I can see you're crazy about uh, Lone Star State. Well, 
Now that I know how you feel about Texas, how do you feel about California, IA? And remember, standing right next to you is a fifth generation Californian who is at the moment winking at you. I'm winking back, too. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about California? Well, I figure I'd better stay here after what I said about Texas in this show. <laughs> In other words, you like it out here, huh? Well, I'm too lazy to work and too nervous to steal. I figure it's a good place for me. <laughs> you sound like a native of California. Keep it. How did uh, California impress you when you first arrived here, uh, Tex? Well, things was pretty tough when I first arrived here. Well, how come? Well, everybody was starving to death out here and everywhere else is in 1936. Oh. You know, I was one of them rich Texans. When I come out here, I had a mattress on top of the car. <laughs> Are you married? No, sir. You look a little like a, kind of a corrupt David Niven. I'm <laughs> <laughs> a little on the wild side, glassy eyed and stringy haired. Are you married, Terry? No, I'm not. Is that why you threw him that kind of fight of luck there? <laughs> now, R.L. or Tex. Here is the prettiest girl, almost the prettiest girl in the United States. I guess she is. Are you a Miss USA? You must be the prettiest girl in the United States. No. Are no, you just being modest? Now, suppose you tell us what kind of a girl you especially like, uh, like to go out with. Well, I generally just uh, catch them by the hand and feel her pulse, and if it's beaten, they qualify. <laughs> That's the only qualifications that you uh, require? Well, when you get as ugly as I am, you can't be too choosy, you know. <laughs> I don't think you're ugly at all. I think you're a rather attractive-looking man. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm not having a quiz myself. I've got nothing for you, but I appreciate them kind words anyhow. <laughs> well, I rarely do this, but I admire your looks. I think you're a, a kind of a very uh, virile and uh, sporty-looking gent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Terry? Yes. What is your appraisal of uh, R.L.? Oh, he's nice. <laughs> well, that's rather a guarded statement, I mean. Is that as far as you can go with admiration? Well, yes, his pulse is beating off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a winner whether I get any money or not already. <laughs> I, I'm a little reluctant to ask the next question, but do you have an occupation? In other words, do you work? Uh, not if I can help it. Uh, no, that's what I surmised. Uh, when you do work, uh, what do you work at? I'm a stunt man. A stunt man? Well, would you mind explaining that? What does a stunt man do that an ordinary mortal doesn't do? Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, these pictures, movies, things, when you get ready to knock somebody down, beat them to death, stomp them, drag them, haul off the horses and buildings, do fight scenes, why, they send for a guy with a little sense and a lot of muscles, that's me. <laughs> You mean you replace the star? Yes, sir. Who would, uh, who would normally get beaten up, and you, you do that job instead? Yes. Well, enough of this nonsense. Terry, uh, would you take R.L. for better or for worse? Yes, I think so. Oh, you see? She wasn't very difficult to convince, was she? And how do you feel about this, uh, R.L.? Can you support me in a style I'd like to get accustomed to? <laughs> What's your answer, Terry? I can try. You can try. Well, that's good enough for me. Well, I'm in. It's been fun talking to you, especially you, Terry, and I hope you find a nice young man who will love, honor, and obey you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see how much money you can win in the quiz. Uh, George, will you bring in the questions? Now, uh, would you uh, tell me what category they have chosen? Or you tell me what category you've chosen. Uh, professions of famous people. Professions, uh, Terry, you understand the game? Yes. The larger questions, the bigger sums, are the most difficult. And you have to accumulate $500 to get a chance subsequently at the five or $10,000. Is that clear? Yes. Now, you're completely on your own. To... You have four chances to make $500, right? Right. The 300 are the tougher. For $300, what was George Bellows' profession? B-E-L-L-O-W-S. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, guess. Take a stab at it. Bellows. 
very famous writer. Say writer. No, he was an artist, a famous artist. Well, now don't be discouraged. You've only lost one question. You have three more to go. Sure. And I have every confidence in you too. Another three hundred dollars. These kids may be dumb, but they're gamblers anyway. <laughs> Sir Edward Elgar, E-L-G-A-R, was a famous what? Come on. Take a shot at it. Yes. Take a shot at it. Yes. Elgar, E-L-G-A-R. Second post. Yes, sir. What is it? Composer? That's right, composer. Yeah. Yes, you now have three hundred dollars and uh, two more questions to make five. Five. You have three hundred now, two more chances to make five. Now you can take two one hundred dollar ones if you want to. The main thing is to get your five. <laughs> Another three hundred dollar one. These kids are gambling. You know? What was Alfred's, uh, Alfred Dreyfus, his profession? D-R-E-Y-F-U-S is the way it's spelled. It's right. Apparently, it's pronounced Dreyfus. I've always called it Dreyfus. Uh, Haven't you? Mm -hmm. And I think most people do. What was he? An was author. he an author? Writer. No, no. There it is. Blow down the toe. He was a soldier. Mm -hmm. a famous case in France. You have... Yes, yeah, true. I mean, famous book wrote, uh, written about it. Rotten of Rutten. You have one more question to make 500. You now have 300. So... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> This'll do it if you get it right. For two hundred dollars, what was Sage? How do you pronounce it? Sage? S C R G E I Sage. Uh, Sergey. Prokofiev's profession. The last part I know. <coughs> Tell me, not him. Prokofiev. Famous, famous name. Come on. We guess it's something. Sorry. I hate to say it again, but was he an author? No, he was a composer. Now, you know he, he wrote <laughs> Love of Three Oranges. He's written many symphonies, concertos. Famous Russian composer. You gotta know that. Well, so you wind up with $300. But you're very pretty anyway. Thank you. And that's very important. Goodbye. <laughs> At the moment, our first couple will come back to spin the wheel for a chance at $10,000. And while we're bringing the wheel out, here's something I want you to hear about Pepsi and toothpaste. Uh, Emma Gatewood and Max Schulman won $1,100, so uh, let's have them out here. Are they uh, back here? Yes. Uh, you understand this game, huh? Not really. Well, but... you uh, pick a number for a total of $10,000. Emma, you want to start? Pick a number. Just take any number from one to ten. Seven. Seven. No, don't tell me that. We'll put a seven up here. Now, Max, you pick one for five thousand dollars. Four. Now, if any other number comes up, this question is worth a total of two thousand dollars. Whatever you win is your total for the night. Okay. Right. One of you spin the wheel. Yeah. Emma. This is no good. Your number was numbers were four and seven. It came up five, so this is worth a total of two. Okay, ready? In 1959, Vice President Nixon opened the U.S. Exposition in Moscow. A short time previously, the Soviet First Deputy Premier opened the Soviet Union exhibit in New York. For two thousand dollars, what is the name of this Russian official? Anastas Mikoyan. No, I'm sorry. It's Frau Kozlov. Can't win them all. I'm sorry, mister, but you won a total of what? $1,100? $1,100. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks for coming down. Yeah. Max, we'll see you later. <laughs> Good night until next week. And no matter which of our products you buy, Tell them Groucho sent you.
tonight, You Bet Your Life has been brought to you by Geritol. Now available in the beautiful apothecary bottle of 100 tablets. Saves you a dollar and a half. And by Somonex, the new effective non-habit forming aid to sleep. Taken as directed, Somonex helps bring 100% safe sleep.